Okay guys, I have a problem. I have been seriously neglecting my 20 gallon reef tank and it has gotten completely overrun with hair algae. I haven't done a water change or even a water test on this tank in about two months and it shows. Now the good news is I haven't slacked off on the maintenance of my main tank. That's still doing fine. But some of my side projects have sort of fallen by the wayside and I need to get them back in order. The main stars of this tank have always been my little barnacle blennies. And they really couldn't care less about the algae. They're doing just fine in here. I'd even go so far as to say they may even enjoy it. I mean, it does look rather comfortable. The corals, on the other hand, may not be enjoying it so much. Uh, the ones that are left in here are actually doing okay, uh, but there have been several frags that have been completely swallowed up by this tide of hair algae that's overrun the entire aquarium. All right, so it's time to look back on where I went wrong. So if you think about it, algae needs three things to survive. It needs water, it needs light, and it needs nutrients. Take away any one of those three things, and algae is not going to survive. So water, I can't really do anything about that. This is an aquarium, it's underwater, so it's going to be there. Light, I can control. Uh, the light I have on this aquarium probably is a bit overkill, and I probably was running it a bit strong in a, you know, the hours a bit long, so I have cut that back slightly. But the main thing that I do have control over is nutrients. Every little bit of food or any coral frag that has died off is basically adding nutrients into the water column. Nutrients that are going to be consumed uh, by something else that's living in there. And algae is a great consumer of nutrients, you know, namely nitrates and phosphates. One of the main challenges of being a reef keeper is maintaining that delicate balance of nutrients. You wanna have enough in your tank to maintain the things that you wanna keep, but not enough to maintain the things that you don't wanna keep. So you wanna have enough to keep your fish and your corals alive, but not so much that the excess is going to be uh, taken up by something like hair algae. My main method of nutrient control in this tank is supposed to be water changes. So if I'm on top of my water changes and you know taking the nutrient rich water out of the tank and replacing it with nice clean water, uh, this really shouldn't be a problem. But as I stated earlier, I really got behind on my maintenance on this tank and things sort of spiraled out of control. So I need to get back on track, uh, start doing my water changes, uh, you know, get everything back in check. Uh, but first things first, <laughs> that's really not gonna help me here. I need to get in there and manually remove as much of this algae as I can, uh, give this tank a really good cleaning, do some water changes, and you know, see what it looks like. So here I am removing uh, the chato, which should have been harvested weeks ago. And the idea behind this is that this is algae uh, that will grow in here and consume the nutrients uh, so that doesn't happen in the main tank. Uh, but since I hadn't been harvesting this, it really wasn't able to grow. I had no space and couldn't really do the job that it needed to do. Uh, next, I am cleaning the sponge, which is completely filthy, as you can see by the color of the water uh, in the bucket. Um, this is another thing that's important to you know keep clean. This is trapping all of the you know waste that's floating in the water is you know getting trapped in the sponge. Uh, so you need to get that out of the tank, uh, rinse it out, and you know export it that way. Uh, if you're not doing that, well, you're basically just giving the you know the nutrients a place to break down. Uh, and you're just feeding the tank or the algae, you know, from the sponge. 
Uh, so I'm going to need to make sure I keep this nice and clean. That's a good way to help, you know, export more nutrients from the tank. And I know someone will probably say you shouldn't use tap water to clean the sponge. Um, use RO if you want. I've just always done it this way and never seemed to be a problem. And then I'm just putting the filter back together, uh, reinserting the sponge. And that little bag has some ceramic media in it. Um, just for some additional biological filtration since I don't have uh, a ton of you know rock in the main display uh, so I've got some extra biological media there and they also gave that a good rinse and put a little piece of the uh, chato back in there you know to start the process again then at this point it's time to get my hands wet uh, there's really no way around it when you've let it get this bad and this is honestly the best way to deal with the algae is to just reach in there and manually remove it uh, just take as much out as you can uh, that's going to be the quickest and most efficient way uh, to remove this from your tank because even if you do you know somehow kill it or you know you reduce the nutrients and it starts to die off it's just releasing right back into the water column uh, that you have to deal with in some other way. So, you know, just get in there and get busy. That's the best way to, to deal with it at this point. And I also used a brush uh, to scrub the rocks to you know, loosen up any of the algae that I couldn't get off with my fingers. That's uh, also quite effective. Um, and just, you know, get as much off as I possibly can and out of the aquarium. And then obviously a water change is a must at this point uh, to collect up all that free floating algae that I just loosened up from the rocks and get that out of the aquarium. And this is only the first of several water changes that I have planned uh, to do over the next week. And although it's not perfect yet, it certainly is a step in the right direction and looking a lot better than it did before I started. And I do have a few more things which I wanna try. Uh, which I got in this month's My Aquarium box. So first up, they sent us some mangroves. Uh, this is something I haven't tried before, uh, but they are known and people have used them in refugiums uh, for pulling up nutrients out of the water column. Uh, so they sent us three little shoots, um, which I'm going to you know, stick into this hang on the back refugium. Uh, this is not, you know, a permanent setup. I just kind of want to get them in there to see if they will, uh, you know, open up, start to grow. Uh, and if they take off, I will think of a more permanent uh, solution for them. And the box also contained a nice container of Chemi Pure Elite, uh, which is a chemical filtration, which will help remove out some of the phosphates and other sorts of uh, nutrients in the tank. And, you know, hopefully... Uh, this will help out as well because uh, this tank can use all the help that it can get at this point. Uh, so this came at you know the perfect time. So I'm really glad to see that in this month's box. And we'll see how this works out. And that's about it. That's the state of this tank. Um, and we'll see how it does uh, you can tell the chorus wrasses are happy i'm done doing my maintenance they're out and about again uh, they were hiding throughout the rest of the video but um yeah that's the plan with this tank uh you know to try and get it back under control and we'll see where it goes i mean first things first i have to get you know this algae under control then decide what i want to do with it i don't know if i want to keep trying to do sps in here maybe i'll switch this to a softy tank i'm not quite sure yet but uh I'll keep you guys updated, and I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.